Good day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curators. I'm Keith McKinnon. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how research transformed this local Masonic um, artifact into what I consider a local Masonic treasure. Now, you have heard me and John talk about previously about doing research on some of your artifacts, how it is a necessity to do it. Uh, it can greatly increase the historical value. Uh, you might have watched the episode where Chuck and I talked about uh, the Knight Templar membership uh, member uh, membership Jew that may have also been at James Garfield's Masonic funeral, and that was done by doing some research. Well, <clears throat> we did some research on this piece. Now, some de decades ago, when I was curator, I found this piece tucked away in one of the lodge closets far away in the back and I pulled it out and after looking at it I concluded that you know it has some local significance to it. I did some research on it and the wood is chestnut and it came from the spreading chestnut tree that Henry Wadsworth Longfellow uh, wrote a poem about and many, many of us know that poem uh, by its true title as called The Village Blacksmith. Uh, it was donated by uh, Brother Oren B. French in uh, 1902. And uh, uh, after doing some research, not enough, but just enough, uh, I put the block of wood on display off and on for a number of years. Now, it's called a sounding block. And for those who are not familiar with Masonic terminology, uh, the sounding block is usually used by the master in the East, and that is for him to wrap his gavel upon during the ceremonies. Now, the tree was located on Brado Street uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, in a section of Cambridge called Old Cambridge. Today we know this, uh, this area of Cambridge as Harvard Square. Now, it stood in front of a yellow house which the house still stands today and not far from the house is a stone tablet which commemorates that tree. Now the poem was written around 1841 when Longfellow uh, who lived nearby uh, would take walks in, in through the Harvard Square area and he was found a number of times watching the village blacksmith uh, and the the tree was cut down in 1876 when the streets were widened in Cambridge um, and it could have been that Wadsworth Longfellow himself may have leaned against the tree or may have sat under the tree. We're not exactly sure. Some years later I was doing some research on Amicable Lodge, another Masonic Lodge of Cambridge, Massachusetts. They were the first lodge founded in Cambridge in an area of Cambridge called Cambridge Port in 1805. Mount Olivet was founded in 1863 in Harvard Square. This is where a whole new chapter of this block emerged. Now, when I was doing the research, two names popped up. Uh, they both had the same last name, Samuel and Tory. Their last name was Hancock. Now, I thought they were maybe related, and yes, they were brothers. Samuel and Tory came from a distinguished family in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Their father served in the Revolutionary War. Tory's older brother by 10 months was Samuel. Uh, Samuel became a member of Amicable in 1807 and later became master in 1813. His brother Tory became a member in 1813 while his brother was master. But this story surrounds Tory. Tory himself never served any higher office in Lodge than perhaps a steward. One of his sons, Charles, also became a member of Amicable Lodge. Now in 1808, Tory Hancock, who was a blacksmith by trade, purchased a lot of land and built a house and also a blacksmith shop on Brado Street. Uh, and in his front yard was the spreading chestnut tree. From 1808 to 1827, Tory was blacksmith of Old Cambridge and became well off, selling his house and business in 1827 to a Dexter Pratt. Now we don't know yet whether or not Dexter Pratt was a Freemason, but 
Dexter Pratt was the blacksmith in 1841 when um, Henry Longfellow uh, penned the poem, The Village Blacksmith. It was not Tory Hancock, but Dexter Pratt. But it was Brother Tory who originally built the house and the blacksmith shop and whose property the spreading chestnut tree grew on. So to me, yeah, it has a Masonic connection. But again, the story does not end there. So here we have a block of wood made by hand into a sounding block donated by the lodge by Oren B. French, used by Mount Olivet Lodge, which was founded in 1863 in Harvard Square, taken from a local historical landmark, which a poem was written about by one of America's most famous poets. The tree cut down in 1876 during our 100th anniversary of the founding of this country. Once was on the land in front of our house and shop that Brother Tory Hancock built in 1808, a Freemason of Amicable Lodge. Now, for those who might think that during this episode for a second, Hancock, whether or not that name rings a bell, you know, could they be? Well, yes, they are. Samuel and Tory were relatives to John Hancock. They were distant cousins of Hancock, past governor of Massachusetts, president of the Continental Congress, signer of the Declaration of Independence, and a Freemason. So the story really doesn't end because we don't know how Oren French got this piece of wood. 1876, the tree was cut down, but as you can see in the front, it says it was donated in 1902. Well, According to his occupation, Tory was a house builder in Cambridge. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, Oren French was a house builder in Cambridge. His wife was also a member of the Poet Reading Society in Harvard Square. So perhaps through a connection of either one of them, uh, this sounding, this piece of wood was procured. I presume Oren himself. Uh, carved it, sanded it, made it into a sounding block, and they had it donated to uh, Mount Olivet Lodge. Now, for some of you might be saying, well, Keith, that's nice, but it doesn't knock my socks off. Well, to me, being a member of Amicable Lodge, Mount Olivet Lodge, past historian, uh, and also being a Masonic history geek like myself, to me, this is huge. This is local Masonic history. Now the final part. Items like this are in every single Masonic lodge and building throughout the United States, the world. Now I'm not talking about a sounding block made by the spreading chestnut tree. No, I'm talking about items made by members or given by members, uh, pieces of wood, other items made from historic homes, buildings, ships, trees, fences, uh, from parks, uh, you name it. Wood, stone, metal items, uh, hand carved into gavels or perfect ashlars or uh, uh, frames or even sounding blocks. Um, and when we lose a Masonic building, when they merge or they go dark or when a building is sold, we lose Masonic treasures like this. So I would suggest that all you guys out there who are watching this, who are Masonic collectors, historians, or just like to dabble with your larger stuff, get out there and find these things. They're, they're there. Many of them are not listed, described. You probably have to read the minutes of your lodge meetings. You probably have to read some of your histories. You have to do some research work. But they're there. Gavels, uh, batons, or rods, whatever, they're there. Find them, display them, preserve them, uh, research them. Don't be ashamed of them. They're part of our history. So with that, I want to thank you very much for watching. Again, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. Follow us on Facebook. And above all, please pass the word about Masonic Curators. With that, I thank you very much.